Hello everyone, welcome back for an image manipulation video. And in today's tutorial, we're going to check out how to do edge detection. You might be saying, computers can't detect edges on pictures. That's nuts. Well, I'm telling you it's possible. And the way it's done is basically you check the difference in uh, luminance between adjacent pixels. So first let's save this file and um, right here in video 5 let's call it uh, edge.py. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to have to develop another technique since we need to grab the adjacent pixels. Before we were using a function called get uh, pixels like this which took a picture object and would return a list of you know all the pixels in our image like that. But what if you have a pixel but you want to get the one that's to its right? Well you need to use a function called get pixel, oh, yeah, pixel like that. This also takes a picture object because it needs to know which picture you're accessing the pixel in and at what x and y coordinate uh, that pixel is within this image. Um, of course you can't access pixels that are outside the image or you'll have an error raised. So with that in mind, let's proceed. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to make a function called edge or whatever you want to call it. Um, and it's going to have a picture and it's also going to have a variable called precision. And what precision is is going to be a variable that measures um, how precise we want our edge detection to be. Um, I find that a good number is say maybe like 15 um, and you'll see why later on. Okay so we want to as usual make a copy of our picture so this picture equals a duplicate and we're going to pass a picture variable and for this uh, image manipulation we're also going to want two variables called width and height. Now we can access um, our width and height through our picture dot width and picture dot height but um, I would recommend that you use, um, they'll give the same result, but it's preferable if you use getters just because they're built in functions. Um, so we get width of our picture and get height of our pictures. Okay, this is actually pretty self explanatory. Returns the width and the height of our image, and now that's all good. Now, if you remember, I said get pixel got um, took as arguments picture and x and y. Well, we need to loop through all of our picture and all of its x and y coordinates. So to do that, we're going to do uh, we're going to use two for loops, and this often confuses people, but it's really really simple. So for y in the range of height and for x in the range of width. And this will just loop through all our y's and all our x's and produce all the x and y coordinates that we need. Now Notice that instead of using range, I used x range. 
Um, the reason being is uh, we don't need to return a list. All we need to do is just have our x and our y. And x range is actually faster than range. So that's why I use it. Just don't confuse yourself. They're almost identical except x range returns an x range object. But it'll work nevertheless. Alright. Um, so how to proceed is for edge detection or how we're going to do it we're just going to get the pixel that is below and to the right of our current pixel. Now this causes a problem when we're trying to access uh, a pixel that is on the far right side or on the very um, very like um, bottom of our image because those pixels don't exist. That's why I'm going to say height minus one and width minus one so that we don't access pixels that don't exist. Now if you were Photoshop you would probably want to access pixels that are above, below, left and right but we're just going to access the ones that are to our right and below us just because that is easier and it does essentially the same job and we're not Photoshop okay so our current pixel I'm just going to call it PX is going to equal um, our current pixel is within our picture at coordinate XY and our pixel to the right, which I'm just going to call right, just going to be our pixel, same as this one. So we could just copy this. The only difference is if it's to the right, it's going to be x plus 1. And if it is below, it is going to be the same thing as our original, except there's going to be a change in the y coordinate. It's going to be a y plus 1. Remember, our y coordinate system is flipped, so y plus 1 is actually down and not up. So don't confuse yourself there. Okay, let me scroll down. Next, what we want to do is actually get the luminance of each of these pixels so that we can compare them later on. And we could create another function um, to get our luminance. Remember, it's our red plus our green plus our blue and uh, all that divided by 3. But instead, I'm just going to make an anonymous function with lambda. So luminance is going to equal lambda pixel and all that divided by 3 so we're going to get the red of our pixel plus get blue of our pixel plus get green of our pixel if you guys can see that Look, like that so essentially all this does is we're saying, okay, um, we're going to pass in a pixel as a parameter for our function, and it's going to get its red, its blue, and its green, and it's going to divide by three, and this value is what it's going to return. Okay. Um, if you're confused about the whole lambda thing, you can just create your own function that will add the red, green, and blue divide by 3 and return that value. It's not a big deal. So, um, the luminance of our right pixel, so this is, uh, stands for luminance, it stands for right. So the luminance of our right pixel is going to equal to luminance, that's this up here. And remember it takes a pixel object, so our right pixel was called right, so luminance of right and the luminance of our uh, below pixel 
is going to be equal to all of this, except it's going to take the below pixel. And the luminance of our um, original pixel is going to be all of this, except it's going to be px right there. Okay, cool. So we have the luminance of our right pixel, our below pixel, and our original pixel. Now this is where the actual algorithmic part comes into play. So the um, for a pixel to be an edge, it has to be the difference between the right pixel and the below pixel uh, has to be greater than uh, our precision, whichever, which we said it was 15 up here, or whatever we specify. Okay, so if the difference, meaning the absolute value between uh, difference of our left pixel and our original pixel is greater than our precision, uh, I think that's how I spelled it, yeah, okay. Uh, is greater than our precision and this is very important and uh, the difference between our below pixel and our original pixel well the luminance of these is also greater than our precision then we know that this pixel um, is an edge and the way we set a pixel to be an edge is essentially we're going to return a black and white image with all the black pixels being an edge and all the white pixels just not an edge, so ignore them. So set the color of our current pixel, remember that's just px, which we got up here, to black. And if it's not an edge, then we can do this except white. Awesome. And all we have to do now is return, oh, one more, two more, okay. And return that image, so picture. You might be wondering, why do we re return picture? Well, remember um, when we got those pixels? Uh, we got them inside the picture, so whenever we change the color of the, this pixel, it knows that it's associated with this picture. Okay? So, let's pull up our command line and let's test this function. And I'll go over it one more time because we've seen a lot of new stuff. Okay. So, our picture, um, we want to make a picture object. And we want to get a picture object through the finder. So da, 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 right here, images, and I have this sweet little image right here. You guys, check it out. It's actually the background on my iPod. If you want a copy of it, I don't blame you. Check out this cute sheep. Okay. So when we run our edge detection. The edge um, you can think of as if you were an artist, what is the main thing? What is the most important thing in this image? Well, obviously, it's the sheep. So the edge should be able to detect the sheep, the legs, and the ear, maybe the tail, stuff like that. Okay, let me just bring that down. And let's just call it edge uh, sheep equals edge and remember edge takes uh, two parameters a picture that's, that's our picture right here and uh, precision well I'm just going to leave it 15 for now so I'll run that and hope we don't have any bugs okay so we're going to show the picture edge sheep and check it out that is our sheep and you can see it 
Precision of 15 got all we needed. It got, um, like, a bit of the eye, the, the ears, the tail, and legs. So that's really good. Now let's see what happens if we increase the precision. So if we increase the precision, uh, say, maybe 30, oh, oops, oops, 30, let's see what that will give us. So if we look in our code, we can see that uh, the difference in precision has to be greater. So what will that do? So as you can see, an increase in precision, we don't have any more of those black dots that we had. We just have the main portion of our image. We only have the real edge now. So as you increase the precision, you're losing those pixels that you don't really want um, in your image, but you're also losing detail on your 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 true edge. So it's kind of a trade-off. Um, I always prefer having a lower precision just so that it gets more detail, but it's all up to you. And now let's go over the code because I'm sure it's confusing a lot of you guys. Okay. So from the start, um, we make a um, duplicate of our picture so it doesn't um, tamper with the original. Next, we get the width and the height of our image. And we do that because we need to loop through um, the range of the height and the range of our x, and our, of our width, I'm sorry. <laughs> and that's what we do right here. We loop through all the y's in our, in our height, minus one, because we don't want to grab um, a pixel at the bottom, very bottom of our image. Um, because if we did that, that pixel would grab a pixel that's not in the image. Same thing for the width. Next, that, that, now that we have an X in our Y coordinates, we can actually go and fetch our original pixel, which is this one. I should make a comment, the original pixel. And these pixels are to the right and below of this original pixels because of the shifts in X and Y that we put here. Next, this um, function uh, luminance um, gets the uh, average of our red, green, and blue values and divides it by three. So it gets the luminance. Again, uh, don't be too confused by this. Just m make your own function if it confuses you. It's not a big deal. Um, next, we get the luminance using our luminance um, function of our pixels up here, our pixel right and below. And then we get the difference between our right pixel and our original pixel, and the difference between our below pixel and our uh, original pixel. And if both of those differences are greater than whatever precision we identified, has to be both of them because of this AND condition right here, then we can set that pixel to be black, meaning it's an edge. Yes, we found an edge. All right, that's good. But if not, if it's not an edge, then we set it to white. So that's why most of our sheep image was white, is because it didn't find an edge. So guys, that is all for today. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. And thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it.